So our initiative uh, had several ambitions. One was to explore problems in environmental science from carbon fixation to uh, water cycling in the environment uh, to sedimentation studies in Puget Sound. Uh, another thrust was um, developing new technologies for nuclear security applications and finally to uh, go after fundamental physics studies, particularly dark matter, the search for dark matter and ultra-rare decays with the Bell experiment at KEK. So one of the hallmarks of the initiative was instrumenting the shallow underground lab at PNNL. Uh, this facility was built at about the time the initiative started. Um, in the over the course of the last five years, uh, we've put world-leading uh, instrumentation uh, down in that underground lab. Uh, the lab shields the instrumentation there from cosmic ray backgrounds uh, by about a factor of 100, enabling us to push down the measurement, the detection thresholds uh, of the instruments there. So we've been very successful in instrumenting the lab with uh, equipment that is uh, world class, um, one of a kind in the United States. Um, this includes uh, instruments for measuring um, uh, beta decay isotopes. Um, among the isotopes we were uh, trying to go after with this initiative, uh, more intermediate half-life isotopes that are important for doing age dating uh, in the 100 to 1,000 year time frame. Um, we've been able to establish uh, capability to measure argon-39, uh, which is a very challenging isotope to uh, date waters uh, from aquifers, uh, and are uh, recently measured some water with the uh, U.S. Geological Survey uh, with an age of about 550 years. Um, we're one of two laboratories in the world that have this capability at this point, the other being uh, the Bern Lab in, in uh, Switzerland. Yeah. So I think one of the unique things I found at PNNL is the diversity of uh, scientists at the laboratory and the lack of any um, impediments to uh, joining together uh, very diverse multidisciplinary teams to tackle challenging problems.